Welcome back. We are here at Kakaros Family Dentistry with Dr. Kakaros Porter and the patient Ken. We're going to talk about the experience. We talk about the 3D printing and 3D technology like scanning and Morja. We're going to interview Dr. Kakaros Porter. We're going to interview Ken about the experience and, of course, the experience that Dr. Kakaros Porter has with all this amazing technology. initial thoughts when Dr. Kakaros Porter first informed you that he will be using 3D scanning and 3D printing technology on your case? Well, I'd never, never even thought about it before, but uh, it was sort of interesting, you know, and, uh, you know, and I just, I needed it done and uh, he was willing to do that. I, I was very grateful. Have you heard before about 3D printing? No, I hadn't. Scanning? No, I haven't. Were you afraid about it? No. No, nah, I wasn't afraid at all. It's just, you know, I figured it was new technology because when I had them done originally, it was uh, probably uh, 40 years ago. So, you know, that was, they were wore out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ken, now that you're wearing your new dentures for about a week, how do you compare the comfort and fit to any that you have previously? The, the dentures and the partial both feel great. Uh, a lot better than the other ones fit, and uh, I really, uh, really like them. That's it. <laughs> Simple. So we did 3D scanning and the jaw motion here at Kakaros Porter's office. And Ken, what do you think when you compared to traditional impressions? Was it more comfortable? Was it less comfortable? Or was it equal? Or what is your experience? Well, with the experience that I've had before, like I say, it's been a long time. But it was so much easier to do. It was more comfortable. It was more relaxed than than the traditional way. It's just, it's just a whole lot better. So when we talk about the dentures, how satisfied are you actually with these dentures? And what kind of difference have you noticed when you compare it to traditional dentures? I'm very satisfied with them. They're working out great. Uh, everybody's, it's just a, a wonderful feeling. And uh, the old ones, I always had problems with them, uh, a little bit of a pain sometimes with them, getting them in and out. The new ones are, are just, uh, they're fantastic. They're working really good. How do they feel in terms of the fit? Part? The fit is great. Yeah, the fit's great. So um, compared to traditional dentures? Compared to the traditional, yeah, I would I would go this way every way, every time. It makes more sense. It's a lot more, it's easier putting any kind of uh, pain like with the with the old ones when they're making up the plaster and putting them in your mouth and that and you got to hold it for so long. It just, it works out a lot better and it, it's a lot less uh, stress. Do, do the traditional dentures taste different than this one or? Uh, about, about the same. About they're about the same. the same, yeah. So the last question came for you and then you're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Is, would you recommend the digital dentures to your friends and why would you recommend them? I would recommend them to anybody that wanted to ask me about them. I'd recommend them because uh, the process is so much better than the old process at regular dentures. It's just uh, everything is a better experience than what it was with the, the other ones. The very last question, would you recommend the family dentistry at Kakaros Porter? Would you recommend this to others? Yes. Yes, highly. I, my sister comes here too, so, you know, that's how I found out about it, you know, because I was looking for a dentist to have uh, a tooth pulled and, uh, and new dentures made. And, uh, yeah, I would uh, recommend them to uh, everybody. It's, it's a good place to be. Thank you for being a good sport, Ken. Yeah, <laughs> it's all so right. <laughs> no problem. So, Dr. Kakaris Porter, thank you so much for letting us film here in your beautiful office. I'm glad to have you. And you got all this amazing technology. I believe you're the only dentist in Michigan who has a Morja device. I don't know anybody else. We, we were the first. I've heard recently that some other dentists have, have uh, uh, purchased Morja, but we were the first ones. From your experience, you are practicing now for three years? Correct. How do you compare the digital scanning to traditional methods? Well, the digital... It, it's, it's very much the same, but it's also very much 
different. At the end of the day, it's a different way to capture data. We started scanning here. I graduated in, in June of 21, um, and we started scanning shortly thereafter. That was our first entry into the digital dental world. You know, if you look at all the research that's out there, all the, the literature, we know that scanning is as accurate or more accurate than PBS or other methods um, in, in many applications. Digital dentistry has it has its nuances. It's, it has some technique sensitive parts about it that, that you need to respect. But as long as you respect those things and you understand how the, how the software works, how the data is captured, you can really provide a really cool service for your patients because you get, the, the biggest thing is, is speed. I mean, it, it's if, if I take a scan, Carson, I can send it to you, and I often do, I send it to you on a Monday and you can sometimes get it to me in, in a couple days if it's a special case. Mm -hmm. We don't have to wait for the, the driver or for UPS or anyone like that. It shows up the same day. And especially with things like dentures, where you know the, the traditional denture process of initial impressions, custom tray, wax rim, try-in, could have taken up to two months. I mean, in some cases, if I'm doing some copy dentures, if I'm satisfied with the patient's VDO and smile line, sometimes I'll go straight to finish. And I can have those dentures sometimes in three days. So that's, that's a big improvement, and patients really like that instead of waiting two, you know, formally sometimes two months. A lot of dentists have actually trouble scanning dentures. I know some dentists that actually have trouble scanning dentures. And to be honest, I learned a lot from you just watching you here scanning the dentures, and uh, I refer this knowledge actually now to other dentists. So thank you very much for that. So oh, it's <laughs> my, my pleasure. <laughs> So you got this amazing merger jaw tracking, you call it the 4D jaw tracking. How do you implement this in your daily workflow? Are you using it for other cases or only for dentures? I believe that was the first case we did with dentures, but how do you implement merger in your regular workflow? So what Maja does is it takes a intraoral scan and it relates that both in space you know, in terms of the movements, protrusive, excursive, but also in time. And with that information, that's, that's really the missing link in terms of the digital dental workflow, where previously, and, and this had minimal, this had mixed success with the gothic arch tracing, the tracing plus outside and below via the analog methods. Now we can do that incredibly accurately, and we can also pin it incredibly accurately in the, in the design softwares, so we can have those really high accuracy restorations. So the way we use it here is we, we use it on the more advanced, more complex cases. So if we're doing the, you know, the front six teeth or front four teeth, some veneers, some crowns, uh, full mouth reconstructions on teeth or sometimes on dentures. Um, it just, it just kind of depends on what the treatment outcomes are and, and also the goals. It also depends on how much time we're going to save. Uh, if it's something like a full mouth reconstruction, we know that, you know, yes, while you had your diagnostic wax up in the articulator based on average values, you still had to adjust the temporaries to that patient-specific motion. Now we don't have to do that. So we save us time, us chair time, but we also save the patient time and the patient visits as well. One of the other things that's really cool about the Maja is we can, we can more accurately and predictably determine where we need to open the video. Yes, we're going to mock it up in the mouth so we can see aesthetically, make sure everything goes well with the lips and the, the face and the, the facially during treatment planning. That, that's a, that's a, a buzzword now. But we're also going to look at Manja and we're going to look at to make sure that we are still in that rotational movement before we go into the translation so we avoid any issues with TMD later on. One of the other really cool things about Manja is you can use it to treat TMD. You can use it to uh, design a mouth guard. Um, that's patient specific, get that joint back to that resting position. Two is you can see exactly where the patient is functioning. So what has been your experience with printing dentures and how did it change the outcome in your patients? So we've been printing dentures for about a year and a half. The biggest change for the patients is the speed. Like we mentioned, it, it could take up to two months. Now, if again, if somebody has a really nice denture that they just want something tighter, newer, it's you know been a couple years, you can get it as soon as three days. You know, there, there are method and techniques out there where you can actually go from a, an endodentalist patient to a denture with only one visit. They're a little more advanced. They're definitely doable. I don't do those. I've done them. I don't do them all that often. I like the wax. I like the wax rim stage, but I, I do that digitally too, where I, you know, I scan the arches. I, uh, I print a record base. I, I add the wax, of course, manually, but uh, and then, you know, we adjust in the mouth and then we go from there. So in this case, for Ken, we did a true dent, 3D printed denture. So what's your opinion on this technology? 
it, it seems really promising to newer technologies so we don't have long-term follow-ups. And that's true with, with many of the, the resins and the 3D printing. And there aren't 10-year studies because some of these resins have only been around a few months. But with TrueDent specifically, it's one of the biggest benefits of TrueDent is there's, because it's printed as one piece, there's no potential discrepancy of setting the teeth into to the denture base. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if there's, if you don't hold them down the right way as you're curing them, you can you know, you can cant the occlusal plane or you can ruin the occlusion. So, and that's something that, you know, of course, a, a technician should, or someone making a denture should be aware of, but it, it's still a possibility. I mean, there's, we, you know, we account for these and cement gaps and that kind of thing. So in terms of that, that's a really cool, cool part. They look really nice. They, they polish really well. They have a nice shine. Yeah, I, I'm very hopeful for these, you know, monolithic 3D printed dentures. So you're doing so many digital dentures. What benefits do you see in digital dentures, and how do you make it convenient for your patients? So definitely, definitely time. They're they're much faster. The patients generally much prefer the intraoral scan to, especially alginate. I'm sure we all know that that initial alginate appointment was difficult the best. Yes, we still use PVS, but because we have a well-fitted custom tray, we don't uh, have to, or well-fitted record base more so, we don't have to load that tray up. We can just put, you know, a, kind of a small amount just so we can relate it digitally to the, uh, in the, in the design software. Um, of course, less visits, nobody, I mean, I hate to say it, but nobody likes to hang out with the dentist. So <laughs> the, the less they have to be here, the happier that they are. We completely skipped the bite room with this one because we filled up the denture with PVS material with light body and put it in the patient's mouth and that was your bite room. Right, yeah. So I mean and and I, and I do that as often as I can. And I will if a patient comes to me with a set of dentures, I will almost always use that denture because it speeds up the process so much. Um, and like for example, if we had done the if we had done the way we did with the denture and we and we did a try and we didn't like it. Well, that trine becomes your rim as well, mm -hmm. and you can you can grind that, you can adjust your occlusion, you can you know adjust your smile line, whatever you want to adjust digitally. Now that like gets imported, and that your, your tech will treat that just like the rim, mm -hmm. and then you can either do you can either do another trine if you want to, or depending on the if the changes are minor, you can go straight to final. And I, I often do that too. So with the trine denture, that's actually a good point. Have you ever sent a patient home with a trine denture and say? Why don't you try it out at home? Why do you show it to your neighbors and then come back the next day and tell me the changes? I generally don't do that. Um, I know there are some doctors that do that, and that, that is definitely a, it could be a perk of the 3D printed dentures where we've all had that patient who's very satisfied when they leave, and then they come back a few weeks, a month later, and, and it's, you know, they're unhappy because somebody said something to them, and then now we... We're kind of in a bind of having to remake the denture to, to change some detail that they didn't notice before. So that definitely can, can somebody to consider if, if you feel like that's right for your patient. That's definitely an option. But you can also use it as a spare denture, right? You can give them a try and then say, hey, if something happens to this one, at least you got some. You could, yeah, absolutely. I mean, most of those trying dentures are printed in some tooth color, some variety of tooth shade. I mean, there's no pink to them. Mm -hmm. um, Although you could add it uh, afterwards, you know, with a, there are some staining kits you can, you can add some color to it. I had a, a classic story, you know, the patient left their dentures on the, on like the side table and their dog ate their dentures. Yeah, dog dentures. Dogs love to eat those dentures. <laughs> and they called me and I told them, okay, you know, give me two days. I think it was a Monday. I told them come on, come on Wednesday and I gave them new dentures because it, it, it's so easy to repro to produce as many as we wanted. Exactly. I yeah. mean, and. That's that definitely an option. I, I've had some people ask about fangs on their canines. Yeah. Haven't had anyone uh, actually go through with it, but uh, some people have asked about it. Yeah. So, so I think that's, the, that's really the power of digital dentures because you can replicate it, like you said, X amount of time in different colors, in different shapes, in, in different pink shapes, whatever you want. Sure. So how do you see the future in digital dentistry in terms of 3D scanning, 3D printing, Morja, 4D jaw tracking. Where is all this technology going? It's going towards better patient experiences. Better patient experiences and more predictable outcomes. In certain ways, it reduces cost to us as well. Um, yes, there's capital investments. Everything in dentistry will be done digitally in the future. Uh, just like cars can drive themselves, 
Just like we have AI that can write a paper. Digital dentistry makes me really excited. That, that's what keeps me going, is, is the scanning, the printing, the, the mod jaw. And, and for the purpose of delivering that, that final smile when you give somebody, whatever it is, whether it's a single, a single tooth crown, it doesn't matter, but giving them something that's like, thanks, doc. Mm-hmm. It, that, that's, what makes, that's what makes all the, all the neck pain, all the back pain worthwhile. <laughs> So how did you get into dentistry? How did I get into dentistry? Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> well, it wasn't my original plan. I was uh, I was actually I, I through middle school, high school, I thought I was going to be a lawyer, and then I uh, okay. I well then I got to undergrad, and then I, I actually looked, looked into it, mm-hmm. and I decided I did not want to be a lawyer. So I had to find something else to do. And uh, you know, my mom is Dr. Kakaris. Mm-hmm. She's been doing this for thirty seven years. Uh, and I've been involved in the office over the years in different capacities. So I explored that some more. We had some, we had some, you know, heart to heart conversation with my mom about, about what dentistry is and the possibilities. And I decided I wanted to be part of that. Uh, so I went to, did my, did what I had to do, went to dental school and here we are. So how do dentists that want to go into scanning, how do they get into this? Into digital dentistry? Well, it, it, it can be really daunting. So the way that I got into it, I got into it, I got a scanner, and then we, I wanted to learn more, so I, I talked to people, and I was introduced eventually to some Facebook groups, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And these Facebook groups are a collection of some of the, probably the America and, and beyond. I mean, there's some, there's some international dentists in there, too, that are some of the best dentists that, that, that I know. Um, and these guys do some incredible things with scanning, uh, mod jaw, printing, uh, everything digital related. It's really impressive. It, and they're really helpful. They share a lot of their, their tutorials. They share a lot of um, tips and tricks and, and math- methodologies um, on how to do these things. And a lot of the things that I learned, even the, the, really the way that we did this denture, I learned from, from these doctors. Of course, there's CE courses you can take. There's there's many of them out there. I think probably the most well known is uh, doctors Wally Renee and Michael Defee out in Charleston. They have the Mod Institute. They have a whole host of classes you can take. I haven't actually gone there myself. There's some of the guys that posted tutorials, so and I'm very impressed by what they do. There's also uh, the 3D Implant Institute. I think in Texas. Um, there's, they're out there and you, you know, you, you can look for them. Uh, I, I would probably recommend join some of these Facebook groups first, mm-hmm. uh, and then see, see who's having a course on what you want to learn. Um, another thing too, to know is, is that if you're, you know, if you're a dentist who's watching, um, that's kind of getting into digital dentistry is, is, you know, there's no stupid questions, but, but also for me coming from dental school where everything, I learned the analog way I learned with the Facebook with setting teeth and wax and all that. And I think, honestly, I think that there's no replacement for that. And I don't think I'd be able to understand digital dentures without having that foundational knowledge of how to set teeth um, and, and occlusion and, and how articulators work. Mm-hmm. I mean, we hated the articulator. We hated the surveyor in school. But, but if I didn't understand how that articulator works, there's no way I'd understand how to make a denture, mm-hmm. my opinion. So, but with that being said, everything we do in the digital world has an analog translation. So, like the Facebo, the Facebo is digitally represented as a photograph, right? And and if and for me, it was really helpful to think about these things in this way of, of to say, okay, this is this, you know, my scan is an is is a PBS, right? That's also a, a, something that I talk about frequently. Is the scan isn't a magic wand. If you didn't capture it, it doesn't exist. You know, sometimes, it was, you know, you see a scan, it's like, oh, the lab the lab can fix that and. Yeah, you can sculpt it in ExoCAD, right? But it's not, you're, you're guessing. So that's, that's important to know. It's not magic. You know, good records yield good results, predictable results. Bad records yield bad results. And you mentioned C classes, and now we also made this amazing video together. That this was super, this was so much fun. I had a, I had a blast all the way through, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can watch on YouTube right now. It's a really cool video, all about our fun. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carson. This has been a, this has been a, this has been a joy.